What's up friends? As promised, here is a lesson on Mixolydian. About a year ago, I made a video called How to Shred Lydian. No theory required, you can be a complete beginner. And I've had lots of people saying, please could you do all of the modes in a similar way. I really enjoy teaching. Imagine this is like a POV guitar lesson. So go and get a drink, make yourself comfortable, cut your nails, do all that kind of stuff. Find a time when it's you time to focus on your diatonic modal practice. I'm gonna give you three things, hopefully more. I'm going to give you a really kick-ass, awesome Mixolydian lick that you can practice. Um, it has some interesting picking techniques. It has some cool finger movements, a little bit unorthodox. You can make it slow, you can make it fast. It's a cool lick. I'm gonna give you a Mixolydian scale shape. Um, and I'm going to give you something else that I think you'll find useful. Please do me a favour, like, subscribe, comment, do all the good things so that the almighty algorithm will know that I exist. So the first question that needs answering is what is Mixolydian? What is it? You've probably heard this term a hundred times and even if you're familiar with playing it, maybe you don't know the code inside Mixolydian that makes it tick. And this is super simple to teach. So it is my honor to give you this information. You'll be familiar with the term major scale. And a major scale would be something like. We number those notes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then the octave, A is the octave of the first note. So uh, let's do it here. Don't worry about learning this scale shape, it's just a major scale shape. So like I said, we number each note, and Mixolydian is almost exactly the same, <clears throat> except that when you get to note number seven, rather than going, Rather than playing your seventh note here, we play it back one step here. That is the only difference, but it makes a massive difference musically. Um, Mixolydian, if you're not familiar with it, is this open, expansive sounding kind of rock scale. You can use it for funk, rock, metal. I've used it in the band Dorje for loads of things. And once you start to get to grips with how to use it, not just play a scale, but how to use Mixolydian, you're gonna kind of have this musical epiphany and go, wow, there's a whole new world away from <laughs> away from all that kind of stuff. So let me play that major scale again. I will be repeating things so that they go in, but I promise you this works. I taught guitar professionally for about 10 years and I helped loads of people get all their diatonic modes under the belt, be able to improvise with them, construct, write with them, and it's the most exciting thing <laughs> that I can give you. I really, I'm excited for you to take knowledge away and have something to actually practice, rather than just kind of playing things that you know you can play and it's fun, and then after an hour you're gonna go and get a beer, which is fine, but you wanna be able to practice something. So anyway, major scale. <laughs> Mixolydian. So, how does it sound? Well, um, if I was to play some chords that fit with the Mixolydian mode, um, for example, I'm playing in the key of, oh, by the way, I'm tuned to E flat, which is the tuning of righteous glory and for the people. I recommend you try E flat, especially for this lesson. Every string is just dropped one semitone to make the strings a little bit more flexible, supple. If you're a beginner, you might enjoy E flat. Lots of rock bands tuned to E flat. Here is a chord progression. <laughs> Now, what I've done by playing that chord progression is I have tuned your ear to the key of E flat, but we're going to call it E from now on. And I've given you some kind of code that says, well, this is a root because I'm returning to this chord. Here's another code, 
another chord that fits within this key. And then here's another one. Without those chords, or without this note droning, this E, if you were to play a Mixolydian scale, you would only hear a major scale. You wouldn't hear Mixolydian. Because the magic of modes uh, is that they are only brought to life when you play a root note underneath them. Without the root note, you just have a major scale being played from one of the degrees of the scale. So for example, if I've got a major scale, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then back to one again, I could start playing this scale from the second note. So rather than da 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 da, it would be da 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 da. That would be Dorian, Phrygian, Lydian, Mixolydian. So the fifth degree of a major scale, if you start on the fifth note of a major scale, and play the same notes, you're playing Mixolydian. Sorry for that digression. Anyway, <laughs> so E Mixolydian, here's a scale shape that I've been using for years and I really like it. And we're gonna take it and create an arpeggio as well. So here is our Mixolydian scale shape, starting on the 12th fret. I'm using my second finger. Then I'm gonna go, uh, yeah, so I'm going to use my little finger for this. I'm just making sure that I'm giving you a fingering that works for most people. So 12, 14, and then the third note's here, 11, 12, 14. That's the same shape of fingers again. So you've got, and then down with the first finger. Now we're going to use our third finger, little finger. First finger to the 12th fret, I'm going to be using my second finger, third finger, down with the first finger, and then I either use my second or third, doesn't really matter. Kind of depends on what lick I'm playing with the scale. Fingering patterns are really up to you. It doesn't make a difference as long as you're getting the notes out and the choice of notes that you wanted. But that's the scale shape that I'm using right now. And to make it sound musical, it's all about bending and creating licks within that scale. So. So in isolation, like I said, if I just play it, you're just hearing a major scale. It doesn't really, you know, it doesn't go in as a Mixolydian mode, but check this out. It's a lot of fun. The chords made you hear the mode. Super quick recap. We know that if you take a major scale, but flatten by one semitone, the seventh note, you're creating Mixolydian. We also know that if you take a major scale and play it from the fifth note that you are playing, Mixolydian. But what do you play it over? How do you apply your mode? What do you do? Please let me teach you something that I love. I'm going to teach you how to play a key with chords. This is super fundamentally useful. And we're going to do this in the key of C because you are probably used to learning at school or college or whatever the key of C major. Because it has no sharps or flats and we all start there and that's fun. And you may have even heard that each of the notes of C major um, has a major or minor tonality if you create a chord from them. If you don't, please don't worry. And don't forget, you can rewatch this video to go over things that I'm teaching you. I'm giving you everything in one big brain dump that you need to know to be able to act
actually practice, play and apply mixolydian. Here is the key of C as if it were chords. So we'll start with C, in this case it's C major. And I'm just going to play open, I mean, in America you call them cowboy chords, I call them open chords. So C major, the first chord is major. The next one is D and it's minor. The third chord is E and it is minor. Now you want F and it's major. If you want to cheat and do the other kind of F, it's fine with me, I don't, whatever makes it work, man. Uh, now we're going to play G and we're going to play dominant. Or if you want, you can play a G major, it's kind of forgivable, um, but it would be, yeah. Now it's A and it's minor. And now it's B and it's half diminished. And now back to C and it's major. That's a whole key of chords. I'm guaranteeing many of you have never done this, but it's absolutely fundamental to understand which chords you can use when you write. And also to learn it and then just kind of forget about it and write things that you love the sound of. But it's useful to know what you can do. So that C, D, E, F, G, A, B half diminished, C. Here's the magic. Any order of these chords will work. It's foolproof. They are in a key. It is the same as the scale. It's the same, yeah? So, let's go A minor, C, G. F. Think I might go to that D minor? No, I'll go to E minor. Any order of those chords will work, even if you use the horrible B one. It's endless fun. I played it in C, if you are a capo owning person, I recommend G7. Then of course you could put a capo here, and you could be playing it in C sharp, or you could put it here, be playing it in, you can change the key with a capo. Or, and I recommend this for further learning, rather than playing them as cowboy chords, you could learn them as bar chords, and you could play them anywhere, and be kind of free. <laughs> so, look, one, two, three, four, five. The fifth chord represents mixolydian. Each of these chords represents a mode. The fifth chord represents mixolydian. So in the key of C major, I can play G mixolydian. That's that mixolydian scale shape. immediately works. I really hope that was useful for you. You can take these chords, put them in any order, you're going to hear a million songs from like Oasis, the Beatles, everybody, the people that really wrote stories and songs knew this. You take a major scale, it's a key, you construct chords from it, there's a method of doing that, you don't need to know that now, but you've got to practice the key of chords, the scale of chords, a chord scale, if you will. Anyway, so to apply mixolydian, you are looking for something that would resolve on the fifth chord. So if I pick any of these chords, let's go for um, uh, D minor, and then F major, and then G. 
so I, there's a really lame chord progression on purpose, but I'm going to show you that it still works. So from D minor. <laughs> Anything that ends on the G, you can play mixolydian in G. It's the chord that you're resolving to, home, if you will. Be better if it was like A. Oh. Yeah, do A, E, G. I'm playing that G note to give the listener a, cl a clue. a bit better. So that's how you apply the mode. I hope that worked. You've got a chord scale, the fifth chord, in this instance it's G, tells you that you can play G mixolydian. If you want to write something to play mixolydian over, you need to resolve on the fifth chord. As in your chord progression, whatever it is, needs to finish on the fifth chord of that chord scale. Got it? Now, if you know a major scale shape, you can work that out in seconds with your fingers. Maybe I want to write, uh, I want to play in D, uh, D mixolydian, okay? So that one, two, three, four, five is the fifth note. So if I put my fifth note on D, then I work out backwards, then the parent major is G major. So G major is D mixolydian. One, two, three, four, five. So if I was to play. Oh shit, I did it in E. <laughs> That's better. <laughs> Sorry. So, uh, that's application. Now let's learn some shit to actually play over these chords. And I recommend you get a looping pedal or a delay pedal with a super long thing and make a drone to make it easy. Or choose some of these fun chords and make your own chord progressions. You don't need to play the full chord. It, it's just all the information that you can use. So rather than playing C like this, you know, you could play C like this. It could be just two notes. It could be the one and the five, or it could be the one and the three. I'm a big fan of using dyads, two note chords. Sometimes less information allows the listener more imagination. And I think that's something that I've always tried to keep in my music, in my writing, is give them room for imagination. Um, you know, it's like watching a movie. If you watch a movie and it's all the graphics and everything's there for you and there's nothing left to the imagination, for some reason, it doesn't have the same effect as something like, I don't know, Blair Witch Project, where you don't see anything, but your imagination fills in all the gaps, yeah? Anyway, <clears throat> Mixolydian, let me give you an area. I'm going to show you a lick that I've been playing for about 10 years. I, with Dorje, I would play this. Now that might sound super hard and difficult and crazy and I would forgive you for thinking that. Actually, it's not that difficult. I have played it a lot, so it's become kind of nervous central muscle memory. But I promise you it's not difficult. And down here, it's in a different mode. I'm going to play it where it would be in Mixolydian if we were playing in the key of E. So I need you to hear E again, so I'm going to play it E. There you go, now it fits, now it's Mixolydian. Oh, 
And then there's a second part that moves into, which is really beautiful. Anyway, let me teach you the Mixolydian mode where I am playing this lick so that you can be familiar with each of the intervals. The intervals are what we call the numbers of the scale. So note one, note two, note three, note four, that kind of thing. Goldorak, absolute freaking legend. Anyway, here is the Mixolydian mode where we're gonna be playing this um, lick. So we're gonna start here. This, I've chosen this guitar also because it's got fret markings to make it a bit easier for you. So obviously this is 12, 11, 10, 9. So we're starting on the ninth fret. Now, and this is, this is home. This is number one, the first note of our scale. Here's the second note on 11. Third note, fourth, fifth, sixth, and then flat seven. And then back to home again. As opposed to, which would be major. So now we've got mixed Lydian mode. And it's a really simple scale shape. It's nice to learn scales on three strings, just, just the first octave of it. Um, I'd encourage you to just practice this for a few minutes. Something like this. doesn't need to be fast at all. Speed is not the objective here. It's familiarity with the position of the notes. You could even do things like Paul Gilbert does. The or you could do things like. That's a fun one, just a. Anyway. Not for showing off, just to give you vocabulary, stuff to do in this scale shape. So we know that the important note is this. It's the Star Trek interval, <laughs> flat seven. Root, flat, seven. So here is our lick, lick number one anyway. So I've started here, you can see the dots. So we know that this is 11, 10, ninth fret, and I'm going pick hammer and pull and then I'm gonna hammer on the 11th fret G string actually I think I picked that yeah I pick it or I hammer it either way works and then I'm pulling off I've sneaked my first finger up behind it and I'm pulling off and then I'm gonna pick on the 11th fret D string so I've just gone Easy, yeah? Now I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to start on the E string now. And I'm going to continue. See what I did there? So just, again, pick, hammer, pull. And then the same, pick and pull. And then pick. So those two phrases combined sound like this. Got that? Let's do that again a bit slower. I've got one more section that I, I like to include, which is... So, so I'm using 9, 12, pull. Oh, by the way, use third or little. It doesn't matter. No one, no one cares. Whatever works for you. So you combine these three licks. You've got one, two, back to one again, three. So <clears throat> I would practice that exactly like that. I would consider it part A, part B, and part C. So part A, part B, part A again, part C. And then when you put them together, you get this. And it sounds cool, especially over that E drone. It sounds musical. Um, 
I would pause now, I don't know whether you want to pause or whatever, but just get familiar with that finger pattern. And what you're going to benefit from is the hammers, the pulls, the jumping over the strings, the changing, that kind of thing. That's a fun move. I really got this concept from uh, Nuno Betancourt when I was learning one of his solos. I think it was Play With Me, that I probably couldn't remember now, but it has a similar technique where he's jumping around and scaling with hammers and pulls. Anyway, from this section, we're gonna move up and we're gonna do the same thing in, in the next scale shape. Uh, well, actually in Mixolydian. But I'm extending it with a note. So now we're going to go. Uh, we're just going to use an A and a B for this lick. So from the 12th fret, 13, 14, 15, 16. So we're going to go 12, 16, 12. And then 15, 12. And then we're going to go down to this uh, 14. See that? And then, now you can finger this two different ways. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so you could go, you can either use your third finger and then second finger and bring the first finger behind it to walk like, like I'm walking. Or you could do little finger and then use your third finger. But it's quite difficult to use second and third separately like this. It's easier to do first finger. So uh, everyone's nervous system is different. Everyone's different shaped hands. Whatever works for you, but the A and B part are this. And I think I'm comfortable playing it like this. I prefer to walk down with the first and second fingers. Now, if we put those together, you get this. It's a really cool two-part phrase, lick, whatever you want to call it. fretted. I've worn it over the years. It's kind of wearing down. Also, these are nickel. They need to be steel. God damn it. <laughs> so <clears throat> those are the two sections. You can always go back and refresh yourself with them if you need to. I'll play it all the way through super duper slow so you've got it in your vocabulary. <laughs> was a, a monumental dump of information but I hope it was useful and fun and you can go back over it and refresh and learn from it. You got a chord scale, how to apply Mixolydian, really if you study it how to apply any mode, the construction of Mixolydian, what it's made of intervallically, one, two, three, four, five, six, flat seven, um, a lick that moves with an interesting finger pattern, the scale shape that I use. Uh, the last thing that I'll show you super quick is an arpeggio from the Mixolydian scale. I use this in a solo for one of my projects called Criterion with me, Gus and Felipe, Gus G and Felipe Andreoli. It's a phenomenal bassist, by the way. Um, so the scale that you learn, I arpeggiate through that. I choose notes to cut through it, so I did this. And it sounds really nice. All we do is we start on the first note, go to the third note, I slide it. So, so 
so I'm kind of doing one, three, four, five, uh, and then the, s the flat seven, and then the octave. And then straight down to this, the three, the four, up here to the 12th fret, and then to the uh, 34, 15, and then 12, and then over here to the 34, 15, 16. Like that. I've almost pentatonic the scale. I'll show you close up. Ready? Here it is. That bend is important. Have fun. Create things with it. Feel free to send me, you know, on Instagram I'm super active, so send me tracks, things you've written, licks you've composed. Uh, please like, share, press the bell, subscribe, say things. Enjoy being a guitarist. Have a nice day. Bye. <laughs>